Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Revenant. Thanks for your support, Rev. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Wasteland 3 Alpha, as we once again resume our adventures in post-apocalyptic Colorado. Now, last time, we navigated our way through Victory's horrible little murder maze, though we did get some nice gear and a pet bear in the process, so, um, yeah, we'll call that even. This time, though, we'll be exploring the right path instead, which appears to uh, be much more heavily guarded. I think it's safe to say we'll be seeing more fights and less puzzles this time around. First, though, there's actually something else I'd like to showcase. One of my viewers pointed out that there is actually a reason that some of these random containers have level 9 locks. It's actually to showcase the fact that you can use brute force to open containers. Though I do suspect that in future builds it might actually damage or destroy some of the gear inside. It's also worth mentioning that you can actually smash open doors and gates as well. Although in that case you may sometimes require explosives or heavy weaponry. Several nearby structures appear to be brand new. Looks like the breathers interrupted a building boom. Hmm. Very sad. Hey, dear. Is it me? Or do they got no faces? Uh, what, the deer? Or are you talking about the horrible formless blobs of flesh? because either way, I can't answer that question. Sorry, Scotchmo. Anyway, about these deer. Herg, says the stag. Well said. Oh, looks like we've got two saw dogs ahead, plus a small number of scattered cultists. Oh, and we know there's a breather up top. Okay, I think these guys are... Oh, <laughs> almost walked right into that thing. All right, Shellshock, do your thing. Oh, <laughs> that is unfortunate. Thankfully, Shellshock is actually immune to poison gas, thanks to the Chemtech armor. Ah, uh, we did have some collateral damage, though. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, I think these guys are actually spread out enough that we can pick them off a few at a time. New targets incoming. Well, shoot. Looks like one of the saw dogs noticed that, but I don't think the other guys did. Let's see if we can take these guys out before they do. Nice. Getting a little lag on these attacks. But this is the Alpha. Very dead. Now let's set up for the Saw Dog. Oh, 
Oh, shoot. <laughs> that thing is still patrolling in real time, even though we're in turn-based mode. That's definitely something they'll need to address. Sorry. Medical supplies. And we've got a generator over here. The dried blood caked on the cement mixer suggests some questionable building practices. Hmm, interesting. Red Dragon. There's no style like old Russian Cold War style. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's have a look here. 95 to 131 damage. 30 out 6 ammo. Oh, wow, yeah. That is a major upgrade. And we've got more ammo for it to boot. Okay, let's switch. Oh, <laughs> you know what? We never gave Scotchmo pants either. There you go. Okay, now let's get our squad set up for an ambush. These guys are pretty clustered up, so this should be easy. Let's wait for that saw dog to uh, wander back over here. Oh, shoot. Okay. Forgot to switch over to our new sniper rifle. Normally, I'd want to toss a grenade at these guys, but like I said last time, you can't actually toss them at people who are on different levels of elevation. That is something I'm hoping they'll address in the future, but for now, we'll just have to make do with Scotchmo's shotgun. Rest in pieces. <laughs> well, that was... More effective than expected. Uh, odd that the other guy didn't come running. He must be way over here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to take that barrel into account. Those things do make a difference. Boars, when you need an excuse for your revolting behavior, Ooh, savage armor. The aggressive shapes on this armor conceal its sophisticated design. Its considerable weight is distributed well over the wearer's body, making it feel lighter than it is. Plus nine armor, minus 0.3 combat speed. Savage helmet. Its monstrous appearance seems crude, but inside the helmet, the ventilation is good and the field of view is unobstructed. Plus 2 armor, minus 0.1 combat speed, minus 4% hit chance. Very nice. Oh, and we uh, got another Radtech helmet. Plus our first set of Radtech pants. This unit features air purifiers and urine recyclers. People are kind of split on that last one. Plus 4 armor plus 25% resistance to burning, minus 0.1 combat speed. Wow, we really lucked out here.
All right, Scotchmo. Let's see here. Now, we already gave Scotchmo some pants, but we might as well finish that Radtech set. That way, he'll be completely immune to burn damage. As for that Savage gear... Let's get Dot Nails into some heavier armor. He's basically walking artillery, so he might as well look the part. Oh, now that is some impressive looking armor. Just a shame it doesn't actually update the character portrait to match the new visuals. I guess Banshee's okay. She mostly hangs back anyway. Okay, let's go get that last guy. Oh, and, uh... Actually, we've got an alarm here. Whoops. Apparently, that required four ranks in sneaky shit. Which I guess Banshee didn't have. Oh, you know what? I bet I didn't have the whole group selected, so it didn't choose the character with the highest skill. Here comes the pain train! Okay, we've got a bit of a pile-up at the door. Well, this is probably overkill, but <laughs> what the heck. That was inevitable. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was not expecting that. Well, at least it was quick. Colorado Dollars, the Patriarch's official currency. His face is on the front of every bill. Now that is interesting. It indicates that they use a centralized currency in Colorado, as opposed to Wasteland 2, where Everyone basically bartered using scrap as an improvised currency. That's actually not too far off from how things worked in the original Fallout games. Aspen Radio Ad 2. An ancient cassette tape. A hastily scrawled label reads, Do not air. Well, now we have to listen to it. Summit Ski Lodge and Resort Ad, take one. Go ahead, Mr. Torrance. <clears throat> yep, uh, experience the pinnacle of luxury at the... Luxury? <laughs> They're kidding, right? I've been in that place, and let me tell you, it ain't been luxurious since Liberace was knee-high to a candelabra. Uh, the lobby looks like the snack bar to drive in, and the room had lime green carpet and orange walls. Orange! But Mr. Torrance, we only have you booked for, like, half an hour. <sighs> and the food? Prawns and aspic, lobster, Newberg. The whole menu looked like it had been cooked 30 years ago and tasted like it had been heated up 30 minutes ago. Mr. Torrance. All right, all right. It's not me who's going to get sued for false advertising. Let's go. Take two. <laughs> Shades of Orson Welles. Or, uh, actually, maybe that would be Jack Palance. Name would match up better. All right, well... While Mr. Torrance was talking, we picked up a couple of new items here. First up, we've got the Mason Cannon. The Mason particle payload of this cannon was designed to melt through layers of vehicle armor. Well, that certainly sounds impressive. 
Damage seems pretty moderate, but it does have a low chance of causing stun. Let's have a look here. Hmm. The light squad weapon fires a lot more shots, but it's lower damage per shot, and it has a much lower base accuracy. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, I guess we should try something new. Shame about that clipping, though. Well, we also got the Ice Spike. Emits cryogenic pulses that turn nearby enemies into ice blocks. It's up to you to turn them into ice cubes. Interesting. Based on the description, it's more of a trap than it is a grenade. Let's uh, toss that over to Scotchmo. We might get a chance to use it. All right, let's check out that generator. Now that powers up this computer, which is obviously linked to this crane here. And I'm guessing we need it for that crate over there. Hello, operator. Simplified crane controls available for your convenience. Please enter your command using the keyboard. Current available. Raise. Info. Exit. Well, we'll go with raise, of course. Processing command. Operation commencing. Raising crane. Be advised. Lower command disabled pending administrator override. <laughs> Free and clear through the rear! Scotchmo, no. That's why we gave you pants. We've got another trap over here. EMP grenades. Good for battling artificial life forms and pranking folks with artificial organs. Sure, why not? Nice. Vlam. Value luncheon all-purpose meat. Meat? In a can? Why, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> you know what? The billboard from the combat trailer. I bet it was for this stuff, rather than circus barbecue. The catchphrase... It's meat would definitely apply better to this stuff. Eternitarts, the snack that even the end of the world couldn't kill. Well, that's obviously devil dogs. All right, Scotchmo, time for some more aggressive lock picking. Grenades. Always welcome. Oh, we've got a safe ahead. Well, this looks familiar. Slicer Dicer and two saw dogs, plus a collection of dead cultists. Let's see if we can take out those robots first, then we'll have a look around. The computer display reads, Omega Pro Automated Defense System, version 2.1.35, status active, enter command. Apparently we need five points of 
nerd stuff to shut these things down. That's fine, we'll just shut them down the old-fashioned way. Alright, the stairwell actually makes a pretty good choke point, so we'll just set our guys up here. Let's see if we can catch at least two of them here. Good enough. We got this. New targets incoming. All right, the saw dogs are pretty weak, so let's focus on the big guy first. Yeah, I think we're fine. Hey, we successfully shocked the Slicer Dicer, though I have no idea what that actually does. Guess it doesn't matter. No point in exposing ourselves here, but we'll just set up an ambush. Might as well take a pot shot. Oh, I think they hide any liquor in them lockers? Or do robots not drink? Sorry, Scotchmo. Robot prohibition. All right, let's see what that got us. Ray gun. The revolutionary tech behind this device could have had thousands of practical applications. Its creator never got past going pew pew at people. Interesting. That's more of a utility item than an actual weapon. The damage is trivial, but it has a 100% chance to apply the shocked condition. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, our bear cub can't get down the ladder. I was wondering where he went. Oh my. Nuclear armor chest. The pinnacle of human warfare. The atomic powered soldier. Inside, the reactor's warmth should be soothing. But it isn't. Plus 12 armor, minus 0.5 combat speed. Nuclear armor helmet. Helmet displays indicate power output, reactor strength, and radiation intensity. The meters are always at maximum and never waver. Plus 4 armor, minus 0.3 combat speed, minus 12% hit chance. Yikes. Nuclear armor legs. The legs are too heavy to use unpowered. Luckily, the cells are good for about 80 centuries. Plus 4 armor, minus 0.4 combat speed. Well, that's definitely the strongest armor we've seen so far. Yeah, that's 20 points of armor if you wear all three pieces, but... 
That's also a whopping minus 1.2 combat speed and a minus 12% to hit. I don't really think the trade-off is worth it. And we also got this thing, the Nitro Thrower. Based around flamethrower technology, this weapon instead sprays jets of supercooled chemical vapors. Interesting. So it's like, uh, an ice thrower. Low damage, but guaranteed to freeze anything you hit. Well, I think I'm actually pretty happy with the Mason Cannon. We can't really use this stuff. Breather tank. It's empty. No dreams for you. I think I can live with that. Chunks ahead. It's about to get chunky. Pass. Slackers. Take five. Gotta say, I appreciate the variety of pointless food items. Around the world in 800,000 days. The thrilling and inspirational tale of a snail's journey to circumnavigate the globe. Sure. Hey, something we can actually use. Well, that just leaves the corpses, I think. Melted capacitor. It smells like a botched overclock. I was expecting more, but I'll take it. More junk. Breather hose. You're not sure you'd want to do much siphoning through this thing. And I guess that's it. Let's go check out... <laughs> hey! Well, it looks like bears can navigate stairs, but not ladders. Duly noted. Okay, so that brings us back up where we started. Moving on. Oh, hey. Cryo grenade. This technology shows much promise, but cryo cells are still unstable. These grenades lose their cryogenic charge after about a year. And wait, how long? How long have these things been buried? Okay, well, dodgy science aside, they do sound useful. Onwards and upwards. Hmm. All right, we're back up against Frederico again. Let's get our guys set up here. Spread out for an ambush. Dream thieves, you stand before Federico. We are the breathers of dreams. Stand before us and die. Why are you attacking us? We're only here for the Patriarch's son. Victory has given us these dreams. We owe him everything. Hey, there's our first persuasion option. I will not address it by any other name. 
We just want to talk to Victory. We won't take him away from you. So you say. The truth can only be measured in dreams. Breathe our dream vapors. Prove your worth. Hmm. Well, that could potentially be a way to resolve the situation peacefully, but I just don't think it's a good idea to breathe mysterious gas that turns people into delusional serial killers. I think we'll go with the other option here. On second thought, let's resolve this with violence. You will be purged from the dream. Here comes the pain drain. Ha. <laughs> nice, mellow music to kill by. Seems about right. I guess targeted shots interrupt the music. Well, that's fine. I don't really like talking over singing, anyway. Ooh, flame tank. Let's go with that one. Man, I sure hope this music isn't copyrighted.
Yeah, we're pretty much done here. Let's loot the area, then go claim our victory. You know, I just realized our Growler Cub didn't do anything. Maybe they haven't programmed that in yet. Bent Actuator. Actually, this actuator's done actuating. Scourer. Runs extremely hot. The skeletons it leaves behind are extra glossy. Oh, that's, um, Federico's flamethrower. I'm surprised that survived being blown up. Breather mask. Even without a crazy drug-fueled psycho wearing it, this thing is creepy. Oh, there's another gas mine. Clever. If we had actually tried to flank those guys, we might have set that off. Prairie Punch. Playing Cards. Play him for keeps. And old handkerchief. It's worn and slightly stained. Then why am I taking it? Okay, so really the prize here is the money on the corpses. More grenades. And we've got a safe here, but... Sadly, we have used all of our safe crackers. All right, looks like Scotchmo's knife won't cut it. Fortunately, we've got one more option up our sleeve. Doctor? Oh, um, okay, uh, hold on. Let's not blind fire the rocket launcher. There we go. <laughs> Take the shot, quick. And that'll do it. <laughs> Let's see if anything survived. Ninety-five dollars. 
not even sure that's enough to buy a new rocket. Well, at least we got to blow something up. You know, I'm surprised we didn't run into any toasters on this map. They're kind of iconic at this point. And there he is. No sign of any rangers. Well, unless it's the corpses. Anyway, let's go not kill this guy. Wow. Hey, hey, look who it is, Clarence. Daddy's rangers. <laughs> In the flesh. The rangers? I heard they were a bunch of little fucking chicken shits. I know it was hard to get here, and no offense, but you can fuck right off back to Colorado Springs and tell Daddy you failed. I like it here. Who is Clarence? You better hope that's not a ranger. You know, my friend Clarence here. What? You don't see him? Oh, shit. Am I seeing things again? Hold on. No, 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 no. You're, you're here, Clarence. Oof. Oh, give me a scare there, chicken shits. <laughs> now, get the fuck out of here. Put down your weapons and surrender. Rangers, I have to level with you. That sounds... Fucking boring. <laughs> Why would I do that? Okay, so we can't take the persuasion option, but we can take the first aid. We can tell from looking at your eyes that you've been using those gases. We need to get you to a doctor, Stad. Nah, no way. Clarence here has been breathing that stuff for ages, and he's fit as a fiddle! Aren't you, Clarence? 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 Oh, no! Oh, Clarence! He was two days away from retirement! <laughs> no, it's just me then, huh? Fine. You got me, Rangers. Now what? As satisfying as it would be to just shoot him, the Patriarch wants him alive. Surrender. Oh, that it? Sure thing, officers. Oh, but hold on. Before you slap the cuffs on, I have a... Hmm, what's the word? A proposition for you. Don't lock me up. Take me with you, and I'll give you the VIP tour of... Daddy's kingdom. Everyone here knows me. Everyone's fucking terrified of me. And that means they'll be terrified of you. Huh. Well, that is interesting. And what's our guarantee you won't stab us in the back? Eh, stab you in the back. Do I strike you as the subtle type? If I fuck you over, you'll see it coming. Fair enough. I will say it's an interesting offer. Victory is not one of the people I would have expected to be a recruitable companion. But I think he's forgetting one important thing here. I hate you. You're out of your mind. No way. Well, at least I tried. Take me away from all this, officer. Victory is yours. How about that? You took victory alive, just like the Patriarch wanted. Given all the horrible ways Aspen could have gone, that was just about the best outcome for the folks back home. The Patriarch's support means that Arizona will get the food and supplies it desperately needs. Well done, Ranger. 
And that brings our alpha adventure to an end, at least for now. It was a little on the short side, but to be fair, I think it was more intended to be a convention demo than an actual backer alpha. There are three potential outcomes, but it's not too hard to figure out what they are. You either arrest Victory, you kill him, or you recruit him, which seems like a bad idea, but it is very interesting. The simple fact that you can recruit someone like Victory, an obvious drug-addicted serial killer, really says a lot about how flexible morales can be in Wasteland 3. Back in Wasteland 2, you were beholden to the Desert Ranger's ideals, and if you stepped too far out of line, then General Vargas would end up sending a kill squad after you. Given that you're essentially rebuilding the Rangers from scratch in Colorado, I guess it's really up to the player as to whether they want to enforce the Patriarch's will or just build up a glorified band of raiders. I'll definitely be curious to see just how far you can actually push that. At any rate, I'm not really expecting them to expand the Alpha beyond what we've already got, but we should be getting our hands on the early access beta within the next two to four months. I might end up doing one or two more videos about some of the other promo material we haven't talked about yet, but otherwise I think we might be done with Wasteland 3 for the time being, at least until that beta comes out. This is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, the Fan Run Wiki, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. Links are in the description.